Reform of the criminal justice system has been trending for years. While some progress have been made, there are areas where much needed improvement is required. How do we improve the system? What about the litigant? Is justice delayed, justice denied? How do we go about disposing of matters efficiently and effectively? Now let's look at the justice system from the litigant's point of view, the problems that are being faced, and how do we improve the criminal justice system? Now we are going to discuss the criminal justice system from your perspective as a ex-convicted person. Uh, so tell us, what, what is your age? Uh, 49. And at what point in your life um, did you enter the criminal justice system? Uh, 15, at the age of 15. And what was the offense? Or uh, offenses? Wounding. Wounding? Yeah. And how long did that matter take to resolve itself? Uh, well, it was uh, fast at that time due to my age. You know, went to YTC and it um, was fast. But, you know, yeah. And then did you commit further crimes? Yes, at um, 19 I was charged for a capital offence. And what was the capital offence? Uh, murder. Yeah. And uh, what was the nature of that matter in terms of the, the, the length of time that you took to well, uh, dispose of it? I spent like uh, four years uh, at the magistrate's court. Um, it, they formed a prima facie case, so it went to the uh, high court, where it took like um, four years uh, to complete up there. So in total, it were eight years? Yeah, around that. Around eight mm -hmm. years in order for your matter to be heard from a, a, a trial? Yeah, a trial at the high court. Now, tell us why did your matter take so long in the magistrate's court, which as we know is the lower court? Well, um, there was a lot of factors, you know, transportation was one. We didn't have the system now where the um, justice on time, that was a no-show. So we were relying more or less on um, the government to send us to court, two and four. And that sort of like kept things at a slow pace. So that was one. The rest was like uh, witnesses coming to court and servicemen uh, absent due to whatever reasons, you know. So all those was factors in the delay at the magistrate's court. Now, were you represented at that time? Yes, sir. And was it by a paying attorney or legal aid? Paid. And what, were there any frustrations in terms of your counsel representing you because of this delay? Well, yes, because, you know, it is, it's time consuming, it's costly on our side, you know, so I would say yes, like that. And you, was, you stated that there were a prima facie case, meaning that the, that, the, that the courts were asserting that you indeed need to be tried. Yeah. And this is the reason why you would have now entered into the High Court yeah. for, for trial. Um, tell us, what was the procedure like in the High Court for that four-year period you took? Oh, no, well, um, I took four years awaiting the trial. However, um, at the High Court, the uh, system was sort of like faster when it, the case started. You know, it was a fast process in that it took like almost a month to complete. And then upon completion, what, what I happened? I was found guilty and sentenced. At first I got a, a retrial. The jurors could not arrive at a verdict. And um, on the second trial, however, I was found guilty of a lesser count of manslaughter and sentenced to 10 years. Now that 10 years would have started from what period? Uh, from the date of conviction. However, you would have spent a significant amount of time in yeah. uh, remand. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us, did you spend that 10 years post-conviction or was that discounted as part of you spending time in remand? Uh, I, that I cannot say in that um, I had was to do the, uh, serve the time that was given to me, which is uh, 10 years was to do six years and eight months, but I did like four or five years, almost five years because of good behavior. Right. And when you say good behavior, what do you mean? Uh, uh, well, I was sentenced, so I became an, um, what they call an honored prisoner, you know, uh, working around with the officers and helping to maintain uh, order there and to reach out to other inmates and that type of stuff. So I was given uh, time to serve more or less. So you're saying it took approximately 10 years from the date of uh, your arrest uh, to conviction? Yeah. 
how do you feel about that? Well, uh, the feeling was uh, stressful, you know, I mean, it's my entire youth went there. Um, it was tough, very, very, very tough, you know, but it's something we have no power over. And what were the conditions in the prison like? Uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. It's a mental challenge almost every day. It's a, it's a challenging thing, it's a nasty place to be. It's uncomfortable, it is uh, psychologically. Uh, it's surprising that a lot of guys do not come out there on the more what we call vagrant level or mad level. It's like it's that bad. Now, were there any rehabilitative work in the prison system that you would, or program, sorry, that you would have entered? I have not really been a participant of such because of um, various personal reasons, but there are, uh, there were always uh, programs to rehabilitate by choice, if you choose to. I, however, did not see it fit to um, embrace any of them. And when you say by choice, well, wouldn't you say that it would have been mandatory to rehabilitate oneself? Via the it's prison a, system? It's a personal thing. If you choose to walk that way, uh, you could do so. But um, you could do so by, by your choice. I, I, on the other hand, choose not to. But upon leaving the prison system, at what year was that? Um, I left there 2003. And were you, did you commit any further offences? Yes, I did get um, start back to venture into crime in uh, 2006. And what type of offences were they? Uh, robbery and arms and ammunition, that type of stuff. And were you ever convicted? No. And what was the reason for you not, um, well, at least what, what happened? Well, uh, the matters eventually were discharged because of uh, uh, the complainants was not coming to court. and. You know, our system is a lengthy thing, so probably people just kind of like lose interest in coming to court, and that was the outcome of it. Now, you stated that you did not rehabilitate, you chose not to rehabilitate yourself. Uh, however, when you left the prison system, did you rehabilitate at any point in time? Uh, I went through an incident in 2012, and that was my more or less weaker point as to call that sort of life uh, day, you know. I just felt like um, I lost too much things as a result of crime and um, it was irreparable. It had no going back to make up for what was already lost, you know. So I, uh, I did some introspection within myself and just came to the realization, well, enough is enough. You know, you're getting older, you know, you want to have a family, you want this, you want that, and that is time to call it off. And it was just like that. And how were you able to filter back into uh, the the system of, 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 of work or, or it anything was like that, out of prison? Yeah, it was tough because, um, you know, people with reputation like myself, you don't, um, employers don't really want you in and around, you know, for a lot of reasons. And um, I was more into the construction field, you know, uh, like petrol train and port leases. And I learned skills uh, working there, started off as a laborer and, um, started to do courses, safety course and so on and just I started to re rehabilitate myself on the outside. You know, it was very tough because I was like renting and to juggle it and stay on the right path was very, very difficult, you know, but um, it's a mental thing, you know, it's uh, just knowing that you know what you want now and you just stand by it and it was tough, but I made it so far, you know, as I was 2012, I turned and I had never really uh, turned back to that sort of thing, you know. And um, has family life, was family life affected? Uh, yes, um, because I had married and I lost my uh, other person because of um, the interaction with the crime stuff. Um, I'm not uh, that close to anyone in family because of the same reason, you know. So um, it is tough, you know, sometimes you need people around, you know, you want to be as a normal human being to feel loved, to be to interact with others, but um, it is tough. And I think it will always be like that, always be challenging, you know. You always have to keep your guards up because they are always influenced from others. You know, your friends is more people that you spend that time with in those institutions. Mm -hmm. Somehow or not, uh, they are the ones that always are wrong because you've been there so many times, 
that you kind of like get close to them, they come like family more or less. So sometimes you may see they prospering and you may want to walk back that way, you know. So um, it's always a fight. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to tell yourself, well, enough is enough. And that was my strength along with some spiritual, you know, always interacting with God and trying to stay focused. But that's not the reality. Seven is out. All day is in. WESN News on the hour. Gift giving during a lockdown can still be hassle-free with a gift from FanZone with delivery options available nationwide. Visit and browse our Facebook and Instagram pages for all your official licensed merchandise and apparel and have it delivered to your door. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. FanZone, we've got you covered. A reminder from WESN, we urge you to protect yourself and others from the spread of COVID-19. Stay safe by taking some simple precautions. Clean your hands often, use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. Practice social distancing, stay six feet apart. Wear your mask, don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth. Cover your nose and mouth with your bent elbow or a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Stay at home. If you have a fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention. Following the above can help us all to help each other. Now, Mr. E, in your opinion and from your experience or other, do you think that the criminal justice system is fair? Fear, um, definition of fear. Sorry? What are you looking at when you say fear? When I say fear, I mean, do you think that it works for the litigants, meaning the, the, the person who is the prisoner? I would say... Is justice, is, you, know, you know there's a saying, mm. justice delayed is justice denied. Mm. Do, you think that, do you think that in Trinidad and Tobago, justice is fairly served? No, 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 no. We are, where justice is concerned, we are in a total mess. You know, and um, as I see it, uh, Chief Justice come, Chief, uh, Chief Justice go, you know, Attorney General come, Attorney General go, and the system remains the same more or less. I mean, yes, they are trying things there, but um, they need a more collective, you know, come together and make this thing happen. Right now, it's just like pointing fingers as to who has the system as it is, you know, and we're not getting anywhere with that method, you know. So it's tough on the guys that um, the innocent ones that are there. There are a lot of them. It is tough, very tough. I mean. And do you think that the police has a, has a great part to play in terms of, uh, arresting and charging persons who, or framing persons who are not, who already should not be arrested well, for crimes. Um, police, however, um, they have their hands full, you yeah. know. And I had my fair share of uh, interaction with the cops, you know. I mean, I um, I wasn't always given or charge for what I have done. But I understand the psychological part of this in that the lawman has so much to do and um, they may not go about it the right way at all times because of the frustration that the job entails, you know? And there are some skillful criminals out there mm. and um, they, sometimes they just can't catch them, you know? and in order to really put them away to save society, you know, they have to bend the rules. And that is, um, I'm thinking about myself, that was, I was a person of that style. Um, yeah. Never really got charged for what I did. I always get in frame case. Right. But um, I came to the understanding that um, you didn't do it, but you did so many things. You know, it's just a personal mm -hmm. introspection. You know, look at myself and say, but you know, you didn't do that and you get charged for it. And, is a give and take. 
You know, it's not the right thing the police is doing, but it's a way of knowing that they know that, yes, you're guilty, but we cannot find you guilty on that, so take a rest. You know, that is something, that is a method that the cops are using. Now, sometimes it is very effective because it has worked on me. You know, it had worked for me. You know, it's reached a stage where sometimes I would see these cops that uh, we had interaction with, and we cool, you know? Thanks for that. I mean, it wasn't writing, but it helped me. You know, we'll talk, we'll laugh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the police in itself, they may go about it the wrong way because we always like to say, uh, come down on them where the law is concerned mm -hmm. and they must apply the law. But in doing so, if they really were to apply the law, Trinidad will be in a total mess because of the loopholes that it have that criminal, criminal, criminals capitalize on. So it's a give and take where that is concerned. In, in, in your viewpoint, uh, how can the criminal justice system be improved? As I said before, it's a lot of work. Um, they need to come together, uh, meaning like um, the prisons, the uh, chief justice, the attorney general, it's, um, the business sector also have a part to play, you know. Um, it's a lot of work. Mm. It's a lot of work. It's not like the blame is on the CJ because of the backlogs or the uh, prisons, prisoners not getting to go to court. And right now we have a, this mechanism where we, because of the virus, the uh, virtual thing is supposed to... Yeah, because we were touching on backlogs. Yeah. The virtual, yeah. Yeah, I find things supposed to be faster now in that you don't need to bring the prisoner to court. You know, it's, a, it's supposed to be a more faster process in, in that aspect, you know. But... Um, it's strange that we live in, everybody's complacent in their portfolio. I, I don't understand why it, we're supposed to be, I mean, going forward now, but yet still, when I talk to certain guys, they're still in prison four years, are waiting trial five years, and it's the same thing that I went through so many years ago, so it shows that nothing is really happening, you know, so that, that's a thing that I think that um, they should get together as a body and um, work on it. Let me pointing say, fingers. Let me say, hey, have, have you been denied bail? Yes, numerous times, yeah. And when you were denied bail, did you see it fit to go to the High Court um, to request bail? Well, yes, I did so. And were you still denied? No. I, uh, the two, I think it was like twice, I was um, granted bail. Do you think that denial of, of bail uh -huh. is a smokescreen, right, for conviction rates being slow? Oh, no, 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 no. The denial of bail is a good thing in a sense. Eh? It is a good thing. But um, what it really does do is just prolong uh, the person from coming back to the free will. However, if the matter was to be dealt with promptly, it would bring better results. You know, than an individual just staying there like a year, no bail, two years, but eventually he will come out. And we know about the repeat offenders. I mean, it's something that when it now came about, I thought it was going to be something really seriously implemented. But we, we don't have that here. I mean, bills pass and come and go and they give us the, give the public the assurance. Well, once these bills are passed, the place will be, become safer. But nothing has changed. You know, the gang bill come. It, I mean, it was debated. There were arguments and you're thinking, well, OK, once it passed, it turned out will be a better place. But look where we are today. You know, they are looking at us as terrorists. Uh, that was one of the, mm. you know, we just keep going back down there to that place of, you know. Yeah. So. Hi, Scott, and join me here every Wednesday at 10 a.m. for One on One Season 2 on WESN Content Capital. One on One is that show where we're going to have meaningful and difficult conversations on topics that we usually shy away from. So don't forget, every Wednesday at 10 a.m., One on One Season 2 on WESN Content Capital. Every day, we communicate through stories. Stories of ourselves, our challenges, our goals, our experiences, and our aspirations. Storytelling is an art. 
an art that we have mastered. WESN Film Studios comprises a collaborative team of experts with extensive industry experience locally, regionally, and internationally. The ability of your business to successfully communicate with your preferred audience depends on the strength of the stories you tell. Your vision should be communicated in a high quality, professional and creative way. From concept to post-production, advertising to film, multi-camera productions, live events, streaming and virtual conferencing, we are WESN Film Studio. Let your own unique voice be heard and your vision realized. Call us today at 628-5835 for your next production. No, 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 you would have been charged with murder, and again, yeah. um, you would have sent, been sentenced at a lesser count of manslaughter. Yeah. Uh, a lot of persons are saying, bring back the hangman. From, from an ex-convicted um, person's point of view, will the hangman solve crime? No, the hangman is not a deterrent. It is not. I mean, we could use examples of other countries um, that are first, school, you know, that are, use other methods, you know, but um, it's not a deterrent. Because you see here, we in Trinidad here, our system already slow. And where that harmony is concerned, there is uh, the Pat and Morgan judgment. That is more or less there to rescue guys who have stayed over five years. Yeah. Now, uh, so you must hang this person within that five years. Free. We, we do have that mechanism in place. So if a guy charged for murder, they find him guilty, they sentence him to die. Because there are, there are a lot of appeals. They, yeah, and the appeals just exhaust. So, I mean, it's, it's, it can never be a deterrent, you know. Something else has to be done. It's, it's not a deterrent, you know. Um, that's the that's most I could say with that hang and stuff. It, I mean, look, they hang Dolce and his entire gang and crime, let's say it, it, there was a drop in crime as a result of that, things escalate. Mm -hmm. All murder rate is all 700, 500, mad, you know. So it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. And, and tell us, what, what will you tell the youth of the nation in terms of, of, of hmm. shying away from this life that you once led? Where the youths are concerned is a, is a, is a whole... It's a, okay, let me, let me just touch on single parents. That is one of the main, I would say, one of the main contributing factors to uh, the children going astray. When I say single parent, I mean in terms of poverty, I mean in terms of father figure, in terms of guidance, because that is the order I came up under. And what I understand is going on here right now is what I went through as a young person also. You know, your family is poor, you would go out there, you would do crime, you would bring home things to your mother or, or your siblings, and they don't want you in crime, but they would accept what you bring in because we have nothing. You understand? We have nothing to eat, we have nothing to drink, so your her advice to you would be um, don't, um, don't get in trouble eh, and don't do this, eh, but she knows where the money is coming from. And this is what is going on in society. It's only when that person die as a result of their uh, work that the family realized, well, he was on the wrong path. But three quarters of the family out there, the mothers know what their children is doing, but because of the poverty, mm. I mean, there's nobody to turn to. So the advice to their child will just be, be careful out there and don't do this and be... But, you, you know, you, if you stop him, you're stopping food from coming on the table. If he get locked up, at least he have life, you would sacrifice and he would come out eventually. And this is what is going on. It's accepted at home. Uh, the streets, however, is another thing. They help grow your child also into the ways that you don't want them to grow. You know, music has influence over it. Uh, what do we call here? Community leaders have a great part to play, you know? And we're just spiraling down. But I think it starts from home. It um, could stop from and home. And do you see yourself being, I mean, I'm not sure if you are doing it already, but uh, be a voice 
or someone who was in the system be that person to lecture the young people well, like, like how vision and mission would have given would have the opportunity done? I do as much as I can do you know I had made numerous requests to see Mr. Alwari in regards to reaching out to schools and you know whoever wants to listen because we're in a total mess you know the prison I don't know if you how your interaction with, with guys there is only children in prison children it's a sad thing and uh, if you hear them talk, you will be hearing them talking. I wonder if my mommy come in today. I wonder, it's, I want to tell you, total children. It's a, it's a heartbreaking thing. It's nothing to be proud of. We as a country just letting our children go down, real down. I mean, it's sad. It is the reality of it is just so many things. But it is what it is, you know. And there's only so much we could do, so much I could do. I try to talk, but um. When you talk to a guy, a child, a teenager, and he have to go back home to hunger, it doesn't make sense. You know, you get, there's nothing you could really do. Because yes, you're filling him with uh, words of wisdom, inspiration, but that doesn't fill his stomach. Mm. So he still go out there, he will listen to you, yes, that point, but he will still go out there. And, and finally, that's how and finally it is. Say, are, you, are you optimistic that things will change? No. If we could change one person every day, thank God for that. But in a general perspective, no. We are not ready for that change. We are not ready as a people. We accept this too long and uh, no. But there's hope. Yeah, I mean, we have a life, so there is hope. You know, I mean, I made a change and um, I wouldn't say because I do it, others could do it because it's, my shoes are different from another guy, you know, but um, we could make it. We could make it. And there's people like, like you and others who are willing to uh, reach out to guys who, you know, want to try and make it happen. One thing I'd like to touch on, though, is the, uh, when a person is arrested for a particular, let's say, let's go down to the minimum. Let's say a guy lock up, is locked up for maintenance. Mm. When he reaches the prison, it's not like if they take him and put him in a separate or people that charge uh, with that particular offense. They would take him and put him with murderers, shooters, uh, guys who are seasoning crime. That is a problem. It is a serious, serious, because we have guys who are going in there for larceny and being educated by these guys and coming out serious criminals. You know, and this is something what the system should look into. People separate that is, them. Separate them. Mm. Let all who's murderers go by murderers, robbery go by robbery, you know. So you would come like you, you are introducing someone into something that they know nothing about. And, and filtering them or that is what is going them. on. So when that guy's come out of prison, now he's educated mm. into the field of criminology. Mm. And now we're not saying he will go that way, but he could do it without that knowledge. So if they could just work on that, that is a serious thing right now. Prison reform, even. Prison reform, mm -hmm. it's a serious thing. So that's just my contribution there. That, that's an interesting point. It's something that a lot of persons don't even know or aren't aware. You know, you would think that, um, I mean, if you are in remand, at least you will be treated or, or it will be based on your uh, offense. But that boy is onto space in, his, in, in, the prison, in, in the prisons. It, it comes back to the whole chain reaction space. of the system, the judiciary, mm. the whole yeah. judicial system. It comes back to that. Understood. As our body. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. E, You're for your for enlightenment. I think a lot of persons will learn a lot from your experience. Thank you. And hopefully you will touch lives. Thank you.